here in East Barnard and today we are going to get stuck in the mud. Hopefully not really though. Hoochies, hoochies. No use buying a tractor because you still got to have your horses to pull the tractor out when it gets stuck. <laughs> and today I'm going to spend the afternoon with brother and sister Sue and Fred Schlebach. They're going to take me around East Barnard and we're going to meet some people and talk about this kind of crazy mud season. Sometimes you just have to kind of stop before you get to it and kind of think, okay, what's my strategy? <laughs> which, which ruts am I going to try to get through? I drive a Prius, so thank you Fred and Sue for picking me up in your big truck because I would have definitely gotten stuck in Vermont. I think the world is going in too fast of a pace and the dirt roads basically slow you down. Even if you get a bad bump up there, you gotta slow down for it. And even this mud hole stuff, you gotta slow down. Vermont is crisscrossed with dirt roads. And here in East Barnard, there's five miles of dirt roads in any direction to larger towns. And during mud season, it's really difficult to know which roads are best. That's where the crier comes in. The crier. Hey, people. <laughs> because we're five miles of dirt road from everywhere, we need each other. The East Barnard Village Crier is a newsletter that was started by Virginia Schlebach in around 2006. Her daughter Sue has taken it on. People will go out a road and, hey, that, that's a pretty damn good road. Boy, that, I didn't have any problem. So then they'll let the crier know. And... Do you read the crier? Do you yes, contribute? I do. I've been reading the mud reports and you know, just kind of seeing what other people think. <laughs> Helping you get where you need to go, I hope. Oh yeah, no problem. Good. Especially mud season is when I think it, it rises to the occasion because it's hard to get out of here. There are four, four routes that you can take out of the village. We have no cell service out here. So what do you do when you get stuck in the snow? Usually holler. <laughs> Only the people that aren't used to living here complain about it. Right? We just know. <laughs> Our mother, after moving here, she wanted to be able to pass news around quickly. So that's what I've tried to carry on um, in her memory. It keeps the village informed. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. I mean, like a poem will show up, you know? You dress for the weather and you drive for the weather. Yep, now it's snowing. <laughs> yes, now it's snowing. <laughs> so here we have... Well, that's, that's two days ago washed. So that's a pretty clean truck yeah, right there. Clean, and clean then truck. here we have... That's mud that comes on the floor. After 42 years, it's another day in the neighborhood. That's yeah. Right? <laughs> so it's quiet right now because of the muddy roads. Nobody wants yes. to come out. That's why you want to try to keep your tires up. This is the rail. As, as the right, the rail. Right there. It wants to suck you in there. So if you're in, in a car, that's a ton. <laughs> the way that I get these through is uh, mostly just speed. Uh, if you slow down, you tend to get stuck. About a week ago, I got sucked into a sinkhole. As they went to tow it out, it broke the steering rack in half. So while we wait for the parts for that to come in with supply chain issues and all that fun stuff, uh, I get to drive a two-wheel drive U-Haul van. Well, eventually it's gotta get better. Yeah, oh, it's gotta firm up eventually. Uh, yeah, I get people that stop me and they thank me because I got this thing up their driveway and stuff like that. One ATV in the village and two of these diesels. So if there was a medical emergency, that's how you would get people. Put a thing on the back of it and go. Well, actually, this one, this year was pretty tough. Yeah, I think it's the way it, it warms up and freezes at night. And this year, of course, it came on all of a sudden. We are coming into a time that's a bit unknown with climate and it is affecting things. In future years, we might have a lot more mud season, a lot more weeks of mud season. Mm -hmm. Oh, a milk truck got stuck out in our barnyard once. They came back and they got stuck down the road here about a half a mile. Got stuck. Harold Higgins, who lived where Fred lives now, I had to put chains on to get up my hill down here, the hill you just came up. Some people got stuck right before the pavement. I mean, it was really like, they were just like... <laughs> right. And have you gotten stuck? No. Not this year? Only in snow. And snow. <laughs> and she says, I'm going to get out of this country and I'm going to go and live on a road that has a yellow line down the middle. <laughs> the highlight to my visit to East Barnard was definitely meeting John Levitt, also known as Uncle John. There were some kids around here that always called me Uncle John. My family came into the valley in 1797 
I was born January 3rd, 1936, right here on the farm. We had seven of us kids, my mom and dad, and Gramp Levitt lived in the farmhouse with us. I'd seen a lot of mud seasons. Mainly, mud seasons didn't bother too much. We were farmers and sugar makers, and during mud season, you got sugaring, so you stay home. That's the way it was with a lot of people up and down this valley. They were farmers and sugar makers, and so they all stayed home. They didn't run the roads. There was only maybe one guy who went off to work. The rest of them had their own work right outside the house. <laughs> really now, you get everybody running up and down the roads when they get bad, and it chews them up all the more. Like a hundred years ago, they put the cars up in the winter. They never run them. They'd, they'd put them in a garage. That's the way they stayed until mud season was over. Winter and mud season. <laughs> so this is your memoirs? Yeah, a lot of wow. stuff. A lot of stuff I wrote. I, I was a clerk in the Army, see. Soldier, can't you read? <laughs> yes, Sergeant, I can read. Oh, can you type? So I became the company clerk, like radar. My story, my first 52 years, I called it. But I went beyond 52 years. Mm -hmm. She says, well, call it, and then some. <laughs> and then some, maybe. When anybody in this village has a question about something that went on in the past or who used to live in their house, John is the man to come to. And he's been here the whole time. He only went away for Korea, years, really. 83 years I've been on the farm. Yeah. <laughs> Out of my 86. John, John's part of the community. I mean, he still shows up at the firehouse when there's a fire. Can you believe that? When power came into the valley. Oh yeah, 1940. We didn't have power until 1947. So I'd go down to the school down in East Barnard and, my oh, God, that felt so good. Turn on a light, boy, I felt <laughs> proud. You would stay in one place long enough, you get an awful lot of memories, and some of them are real emotional. John makes it pretty clear that being stuck someplace is not such a bad thing. We're all pretty close-knit, so we help each other out. We got some awful nice people moved in. The village was so welcoming to us. And there's old and young here. And the other thing where people are like, I can't get out. Um, is somebody going to the store? Could you get me some, you know, the milk or eggs or whatever? It's home, I guess. I love the land that I'm living on. This poem I did in 2012. We had one hell of a mud season. Even the Barnard roads and a few other roads were closed. Mud season came to East Barnard Town. It affected the people for miles around. Pomfret, Barnard, Sharon, and Royalton, too, had impossible roads of muddy goo. Cars got stuck and had to be pulled out. East Barnard Crier helped us to make a decision each day of which road to take. The town crews, I gotta give them high praise for all they do. Hand of applause. Mind the dip! Holy tamale! Thank you, Fred and Sue Schleybach, for making sure I didn't get stuck in the mud. And we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Drive safe, everybody. It's rough out there. This video series is called Stuck in Vermont. Stuck in Vermont. Stuck in Vermont, right. So, you know, you get stuck in the snow, you get stuck in the mud, um, and your family has been stuck here a long time. In, in a good way. Stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> in a very good way. Yeah, they've been here a long time.